Hi, I'm Amy from Doodle Dog Designs. So I got a few wooden buckets that are falling apart at an auction a few weeks ago, and I decided to get them so I could use the individual wooden pieces to use as a base for a punch needle seam. I took one piece off of one of the buckets and I cleaned it up. I'm going to punch this Mrs. McGregor bunny pattern. She has a flat bottom, so she will stand nicely. I have the pattern here printed out and I'm going to trace it onto my weaver's cloth. You'll notice here her arm is separate and it is punched separate and then it is sewn onto her. Gives her a 3D arm and this will be perfect. I'm going to have her hold on to a basket full of carrots. I finished punching it and I have trimmed the edges and pressed them to the back and I am going to be hanging something from Bunny's arm. So I have, instead of just a thin piece of cardboard or interfacing, I've used a little bit thicker of a cardboard, a corrugated cardboard that I'm going to place in the arm in between the punched piece and the wool and this will just give it a little bit more substance so the arm isn't saggy and I'm going to put it under the folded over weaver's cloth and then I will put the wool on top of that and then I'm going to stitch it down. I do have a video showing how I sew backings on my punch needle projects and I will put a link in the description below to that video. I finished sewing up my bunny. It has a flat bottom so it will stand on its own. I got these little carrot bottoms at Dollar Tree. They're a little too bright orange for my taste so I'm going to work on toning them down a little bit. I've got this folk art cocoa bean antique medium. They've left a hole here for you to be able to stick some stems in and so I'm going to use that to poke a skewer in to make it easier to paint this antique medium on. That made it maybe darker than I want, so I'm going to take some of this antique medium and water it down. It's definitely going on much easier. I think that's better. Here's the original. Here's this watered down antique medium and here's the thicker antique medium. My antique medium has just gotten thick. Well, if you buy some of this, it might be thinner and you might not need to water it down. For my carrot tops, I decided to use some jute and I'm going to glue together little bundles for each carrot and then I'm going to color it green. So I measured out some jute and there's quite a bit of a little hole in here. So by the time I poke these in the hole, that is a pretty good length. That's about two and a half inches long. So I'm going to take three pieces. You would maybe need more or less depending on how thick your jute is. I'm going to untwist the pieces. And then stack them all up together. So my first step is going to be, I've got some tacky glue here and I'm going to rub it around the bottom here to hold the bottom together. I will let this completely dry the glue dry before I start painting them.
I've mixed some apple barrel leaf green paint into some water here. And then I'm taking the dried juice. So this is the end that I glued and I'm going to hold on to that. I don't want to get that in the paint mixture. And I'm just going to dip these in. And then I won't worry too much about getting them spread out yet. I'll wait and get the individual strands spread out after the paint dries. Right now I'm just getting the color on there. I'm going to fluff up the jute a little bit and then I'm going to cut off. It got a little stringy here on the glued part. I'll just cut that off. And then I'm going to use this tacky glue and put a little bit of glue in the hole of the carrot and then I'll just stick the carrot top down in there. I'm going to make a wooden crate to hold the carrots. So I have some short popsicle sticks. These are two and a half inches long and I'm going to use nine of those. And then I'm going to use some longer popsicle sticks and cut them. You could also use more of these short popsicle sticks if you want to just buy one package of popsicle sticks. I just have some long ones and some short ones. So that's what I'm going to use. And then you'll need 16 that are cut at one and a half inches long. So I'm just going to use a pencil to make a mark. And these are four and a half inches long, so I can get three pieces out of each one. And then I'm using some tin snips to cut right along where my pencil mark is. And then I'm going to use a sanding block to sand off the rough edges. Now I'm going to use some tacky glue. And for each side, I want three of these. And then I want two. Of these shorter pieces. So I'm going to glue the short pieces and I want to leave a little bit of an edge over here where there's some popsicle sticks sticking out. And then it doesn't have to be perfect but try to get them fairly evenly spaced. Now I'm going to make the ends and it will be very similar. I'm going to have three of the short pieces for each end. And I have some that are rounded at the end and some that are straight on the end. So I'm going to try to use all the same in each direction. And then I'm going to put some of the ones with the curved ends here to glue them all together just like I did those. Now when I glue these together I want the edges to all line up. I don't want that lip like I have on these. 
this will help when we put it together we'll put this edge up against here And for the bottom, I did the same as I did for the sides here, except I put my pieces holding it together. I glued them in the middle instead of on the sides. I'm going to let these dry a little bit and then I will start gluing them together. Once the sides are dry, put a little bit of glue on one of the edges here and stick a end piece 90 degree angle and then you want to do that to another one just make sure you are putting them on the right side so it will fit together And you can fit all four pieces together and let that dry. Then finally, once that is dry, I just want to glue the bottom onto the edge here. So it's really going to be glued along the edge here. Now I'm going to paint my crate with this vintage white folk art paint. I am going to just age it with a antiquing medium so I'm not going to worry too much about getting everything completely covered. I do want to paint inside. I've got some of the same mixture here that I used on the carrots. This is some watered down antique medium. And I'm going to paint it onto my crate. I wiped off less on the inside so that it has an more of a dirty look on the inside. I'm going to just now let this dry. I'm using this carrot label that came in this pack of printables. This is available in my Etsy digital printable shop. I'll put a link in the description below. Each of the labels comes as a JPEG and so I imported the JPEG into my word processor and then I'm going to shrink it to the size that I want and I want it to be no more than one and a quarter inches tall. I definitely put one on both sides. I might use four of them. So I'm just, since I'm printing them, we'll go ahead and print out four of them. I reprinted these at an inch tall instead of an inch and a quarter. That's going to work much better for fitting on here. Now I've got my ink pad here. I'm just going to get a little bit of ink on the edges to grunge them up a little bit. And I've got my Mod Podge. So I'm going to Mod Podge the label onto the crate.
Making it a little bit off square here. Now I've got my instant coffee. I have a little bit of instant coffee there and I'm going to Mod Pod over the top of my label here just to seal it in. But I'm also going to use a little bit of the instant coffee then to sprinkle around the edges Going to do that on all four sides. Just sprinkle a little bit of the instant coffee. And then apply more Mod Podge over the top. I am using a matte finish of the Mod Podge. I don't want this to have a glossy look. I'm going to let this dry. This basket I'm going to use also looks very new and clean. So I'm going to use a little bit of the same technique on it. I'm going to put some Mod Podge on it in areas and then sprinkle the coffee on it. Let's see how this works. I've not tried this before on a basket like this. basket is dry and I'm going to sew it to her hand here so I want it to be kind of out in front of her and at a little bit of an angle about like that so I'm going to use a needle and thread tops are a little too long. I'm going to trim them off. I'll be careful though that I don't just trim it all off at the exact same length. That wouldn't look very natural. Then I'm going to place three carrots in her basket. I'm going to use a little bit of glue here just to keep the carrots bundled up together. I'm going to let that dry a little bit before I try to stick it in the basket. I'm going to stick them back in now, but I'm going to add a little bit of glue this time to keep them held in.
I did not get a video of this, but I used my hot glue gun then to glue the pieces onto my wooden board. I got all finished and I realized that I forgot to put the tail on. So normally I would sew it on, but since it's all glued together now, I'm going to just put a bit of glue on the back here where the tail goes and stick the tail on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.